Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Pods of the Multiverse. We're an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play d and I'm Andy, and I'm the DM for our adventures in the world of Theros. And let's go ahead and introduce the players for this game right now. I'm Jimmy. I play Gron, the Minotaur Barbarian who went to Death Bellow Canyon and so far has lived to tell about it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, I'm Scala. I play Andromedy. I'm fine. I'm Andromedy. I'm the voice of Clovis. Andy can't fucking touch <laughs> me and he fuck hates her. it. <laughs> you fuck her. You fuck her. Calling me out like that. Nothing but facts. My name is Jeppy. I play Clix, the Leonin rogue who is still rubbing the top of his head after getting a big bop on it from Alakia. <laughs> nope. Not real bad. Olakia. Like in Ola- Castlevania. Olakia. There you go. Good enough. All right. It's pretty good. We don't want to put anything else there. Join our Discord. Join our Discord. <laughs> if you found this podcast somehow out there in the open waters of the internet, like us on Twitter. Look us up on Patreon. Engage with us. It's lonely. And, all, and <laughs> listen to the first 10 episodes if you haven't done that. Yeah, and whoever you freaks are who are starting in the middle, don't do that. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't the middle. This is the penultimate episode. This couldn't be further from the middle. He's talking about the, the double the amount of listeners we have on average for episode six. Yeah. There's a weird spike there. Anyways. Anyway. 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 That's table talk. And then you can no, it's head. not! <laughs> and, then you can... <laughs> and you're tuning in this week to the... 11th game, which means we are solidly in the final stretch of this, our first campaign. Let's get into it. After meeting with the Oracles and the other leaders of Akros, our heroes, the Triad of Fates, gathered what forces they could in Califex, Polymede, and a single group of hoplites, and made for Death Bellow Canyon. They made good pace with Gron and Califex, the Wasteland experts, leading the way, and other than the occasional storm of fell flay wind, arrived and descended into the vast canyon network. Finding an odd shadow that clung to every surface, more like a mold than a gas, they used daylight to avoid whatever undead magic the shadows held, but before long found themselves trekking through the canyon, more or less avoiding the ire of any rage gore minotaurs that still remained there. Once exhausted of their light, however, several wraiths came out of the shadows and began attacking their company. In that battle, a new ally appeared to them in the form of Aramoana, a triton leading a group of heavily armored bronze bone minotaurs from Skophos. After they helped our heroes vanquish the wraiths, an elderly oracle came out of their number called Alakia the Torn and told them she saw a vision of Polymede and Andromeda's plea for help. Traveling together, the two forces made camp in a shallow cave, and Aramoana proceeded to tell the party about her people, the cursed tribe of the Sand Sea beyond Skophos, and that labyrinthine polis of minotaurs that they have for generations since called their home. Meanwhile, Gran remarked with Lachia about Mogus, Skophos, and this dark present time when something greater even than the struggle between Mogus and Erois has put the war gods on the same side of battle. Continuing through the canyons, they eventually came to the enormous mouth of the Kragma, but were quickly overwhelmed by a gargantuan Shadow Hydra. With everyone's efforts combined, however, they were able to overtake it, but not before more wraiths had come to surround the company once more. With the Hydra destroyed and the wraiths scattered, they tried to regroup for a short rest, but Rage Gore Minotaurs, hearing the battle nearby, had begun to gather an attack. Finally, Veronese, the ward of the champion Aesrius, arrived rappelling down the canyon walls with more hoplites behind her from Akros, declaring that Arissa's nightmarish vision of Akros being retaken would not have stopped her mentor from aiding the party of Abel, and so she had come to aid in his stead, ultimately giving our heroes a moment to flee into the cave. Passing within the giant maw-like opening of this cave, All outside light seems to quickly fade as if passing into this space has devoured it, leaving it cold and dark. Everyone go ahead and roll me perception checks. Nine. Twenty-one. Four. 
Clicks and Gron, obviously very hurt from the battle. Even Califex, very disoriented at Gron's side, unable to notice what Andromeda you pick up immediately, and that's that as these steep, rough-cut stone steps descend and narrow towards some space beyond, the echoes of the battle outside quickly fade much more than what you would naturally assume in a giant cave like this. In sort of a similar way as the light itself as you pass through this threshold. And indeed, your crown is still ambiently pinging with this magical detection of undead magic all around. Okay. Again, is there like a directionality to it? Obviously, straight down, right? Yes. Pretty much one way. Okay. So instead of going the one way and doing the adventure, I say we get out of here. Obviously not. I, like, literally couldn't tell if you were serious or not. No, <laughs> no. Okay. I guess I did that a little too deadpan. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, so. it was, I knew you weren't serious, but it was hella deadpan. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's no. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know if we should go down the one way, guys. Oh, my Let's God. turn around <laughs> since off. we came this far. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm the only one with dark vision, right? Yeah. All right. I think I should lead. I'm presuming, like, a light spell works in here, though. So far, yes. So specifically, like, darkness, magical darkness, would ping on your crown as being that spell. So, so far, you don't get that read. Okay, cool. Okay, so how do you proceed? Gron in front. Gron in front. It's all right, Gron. I'm right behind you. All right. Though, we should probably find someplace a little more hospitable to find some rest. Uh, Califex clutching his side as you descend further into this cave. I'm pretty beat up too. Yeah, I'm not feeling so good. So as you descend, you come into a large chamber, akin to Gron, what you would recognize perhaps as a sort of gathering space among Minotaur warbands, with several terraced stone stairs and balconies in odd, twisted layouts among these cavern walls. Mm. As well, there are huge stalactites and stalagmites covering the floors and ceilings that you can see, creating a feeling of impediment in an otherwise seemingly large and empty space. How far can we see? It's 20 feet normal light, 20 feet dim light, so it's partially obscured beyond 20 feet. Still not a lot. Gron, if you want to go ahead and roll perception. Sure. 21. Awesome. So, still in this marching order, as you weave the party through these enormous stalagmites, you see on the opposite side of this cave, from the entrance that you came through, there is a large balcony with stone stairs leading up to it that has an altar to Mogus, where you can clearly see his form standing over some sort of large bronze basin with this great axe plunged straight into it. Next to that balcony, you see a tunnel leading out of this cave, and on the opposite side, you see another balcony, which, to you on that roll and the amount of light you have, appears empty. Mm. Is there a door that leads to the balcony? So they both kind of have stairs that go up to them, and mm. then there's this tunnel in between beneath the two of them. Balcony seems like a good place to rest. Only one way in. Good observation. Let's make our way up. So do you go up the empty one or the one with the altar? Oh, right, there's two. The empty one. Okay. Not ready to deal with that altar yet. Sure. <laughs> Too fucking tired to even be bothered right Great. now. So the four of you climb these narrow stone stairs up to this stone-cut and simplistic balcony, which overlooks this entire cavern. Let's go ahead and roll investigation as the four of you reach the top of this. 21. 14. 7. Oh, they're all multiples. That's pretty cool. Is there a bonus for that? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you reach the top of the space and it appears completely empty, save for clicks. You notice on the cave wall next to this balcony, that there are some slash and scrape marks 
that look to be made by some large weapon or monster, and they seem fairly recent. Pointing up to them, Clix says, something definitely lives in here. I'd like to think we'd hear something that large before it gets to us. Do we still feel safe to rest here? I don't think we have much of a choice. Gron, as Clix points this out, and you now see it, go ahead and give me a insight or nature check. Andromeda, you can do this too. Okay. That's a six nature. An animal, maybe. Uh, That's a 24 insight. Holy shit. Uh, (laughs) Wow. Uh, Good thing I included you on this roll. Califax is going to roll also. Yeah, Califax only rolled a three. He rolled a three? I rolled a three. Aw. Brothers. Buddies. Bros. 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 Three bros. <laughs> the three bros. Andromedy, you assume, based on the enormous number of them that you have encountered over the past few days and weeks, that these were made by minotaurs, possibly in some enraged or ritualistic state as they thrashed about this space in whatever rituals or, or sacrifices they were doing. You know, these markings, they remind me of that time I got... I really lost control of myself in the bath and made a bunch of dents in the wall there. But there seems to be a sort of ritualistic quality to how they are made. <laughs> I, I didn't, even, I didn't Wait, even imagine that parallel, but that is f- so fucking funny. You could not make marks like that on a wall if you tried. You're correct. I I am small. And I think I could. What he said. Wait, and Andromedy, you? What are you talking about? Some enraged state? I've not known you to fall into a rage. Um, it is something that takes some discipline to control. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Andromedy means that genuinely, like, yeah. I can always feel in the periphery of my thoughts the fury of Clothis. She is greatly displeased with the recklessness with which mortals have seen to tear at the fabric of fate. Hmm, I see. I know what you mean. I have rage, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Kron, we know. You use it to great effect to defend us all. Thank you. Clicks, rubs at his arm and says, Don't we all know? But in any case, there does not appear to be any ritual taking place here. I think we may be safe to rest. Okay. Very cool. So, the four of you try and finish the short rest that was cut off only moments ago. I'm going to say since Andromedy would be the least hurt of the four of you, while you just try and sit down and take a moment for 30 minutes or so. Andromedy, go ahead and give me a perception check. 13. Okay. Occasionally, you hear echoes of wailing, almost screaming. Not coming from where you came from, but coming from possibly where you intend to go in the narrow tunnel beyond this space. Other than that, you all successfully complete your short rest. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, baby. <laughs> oh. Gran, you see during this short rest, Califex goes to bandage his side and his arm, and after finishing that, goes towards you with the remaining bandages. Gran, please, if there's anywhere perhaps you can't reach that I may be able to help. Yeah, uh, kind of this <laughs> spot right in the middle of my back. <laughs> oh my goodness, those... Fang marks are enormous, and he helps you bandage the small of your back, where it is hard for Gron to reach. Yeah, Gron turns to reveal just, like, the bloodiest, most disgusting-looking wound. Oh, my God, it yeah. It feels, like, kind of itchy back there. Check it out. Oh, oh, dear. By Erois, it is a miracle you are still alive. All right. That's not a great number of hit points, but it's better than before. You finish your short rest. What would you like to do next? Uh, I feel better. Yeah, we're we're looking a little bit better now. All right. Did we see a an altar or something on the way up here? Yeah, it looked like Mogus. You know, Minotaur shit. We should go check it out. I mean, should we? That's why we're here. Clicks has a quick big stretchies before he gets off and goes. Before he gets off? 
Yeah, I realized that wasn't great. <laughs> Before he Wish I hadn't said it. Stairs. We can go ahead and cut that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> or not. It's fine. I just Unless you jump off the balcony. It's about Clicks 20, does not do a big stretchy ground. and then get off. Let me make that clear. <sighs> okay, let's go do Minotaur shit. <laughs> Gron walks down the stairs. Thank you. And back up the other stairs. Gron, you climb the stairs towards this altar. Andromedy, if you... You're following, I assume. Yes, I, I would be. As am I. The rest of the party falling behind you, Gron. Andromedy, as you pass by this tunnel and make for the other set of stairs, you can sense that there's a strong evocation spell that covers that tunnel. Gron, you move towards the altar and you see, indeed, this is a giant statue of Mogus himself, his four large golden horns his massive form hulking over this large bronze basin with his great axe in both hands plunged down into it. Gron, go ahead and give me a investigation check. Investigation? Well, it's a good roll anyway. 16. You see freshly burned ash in this basin with a faint hint of black smoke that seems to be stirring around within it. Does the black smoke look like something I've encountered recently? It does kind of have that similarity to a lot of this other ambient shadow that's been clinging all about these surfaces. Andromeda, you would recognize this as well. It doesn't appear to be kind of moving out into the space in any way. It seems to be contained within this basin, just kind of swirling around. I was just going to defer to Andromeda. What do you make of this? I'll come take a look at it. Great. Go ahead and give me an arcana check. Sure. 14. You feel like this basin and the tunnel might be somehow connected. Mm. You're not sure how, but it does seem to have a slight tether, a slight trace of the same sort of magic. I'm going to I'm going to dip a hand axe in it. See if anything happens. Ooh. Okay. You dip a hand axe into the ash. Go ahead and give me a religion check. Eleven. You do, and the eyes of this statue begin to very faintly glow red. Gron, I think you've done something. Something's happening. Look there. Huh. I guess I'll do it again. I'm going to dip another hand axe. Okay. (laughs) So I just Uh, have two hands with two hand axes dipped in this. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, obviously, I can see that, but you're... You're doing your best. It's all right. You dip a second one in, and the same sort of effect seems to happen. Andromedy, if you want to follow up his actions with either another arcana check with advantage or a religion check with advantage. I think I'll go with religion for this. Seems a religious thing. That's a 21. Okay. This space has been desecrated in some way, and you think perhaps in either lighting this basin or literally lighting with radiant damage rather than fire damage this basin that it could perhaps dispel whatever magic lies beyond Mm. this area has been befouled I suspect any sort of flame or holy magic might flame you say (laughs) <laughs> yeah go ahead uh, oh no oh no click starts to back away <laughs> no it's okay Gron is gonna grip both sides of this basin mm-hmm. and just light it just torch it if he can amazing because you can do that right because yep. that's part of my that's my sixth level subclass feature amazing Gron you grip this enormous basin in both hands and invoke the rage of your storm soul, and the basin erupts with a red flame. The smoke, this swirling shadow that lay within this ash, is immediately driven out and scattered. And Andromedy, when this happens, you notice, indeed, this evocation magic that seems to blanket the tunnel you intend to pass through disappears. Well done, Gron. What I do? You're fired dissipated the foul magic that was corrupting our way forward. Well, that's good. And let's go. Awesome. Having dispelled this very potent magical darkness, you are able to traverse the next passage without needing to expend any further light resources. And so, 
assuming the same marching order with Gran in front. Gran, you lead the party into a narrow yet rather finely constructed tunnel out of this space. Not ornate or particularly fancy in the way that the tunnels and various mine shafts of the Volcano Temple were, but certainly not simply natural rock carved out in any sort of errant way. You can see occasionally every 10 or 20 feet or so, there are columns and arches that keep these high yet narrow walls of this passage intact. Gran, leading the way, go ahead and give me another perception check. 15. This tunnel extends for quite a while, and it's all kind of going at a slight decline the entire time. Occasionally there are a small set of stairs or a dip in this direction, but it's all going down slowly until you come to a point where it opens up to a small room. Carved straight out of the stone, you see on a 15 that this appears to be a space filled with what you can see from the entryway as these large pits dug straight into the floor that are covered by these sort of crude metal grates all in the center of this room and to the side in the distance there is a large stone table almost like a workstation or some sort of like a workbench of some kind this series of large stone tables that have small vials and tattered scrolls and parchment strewn about. Any other ways in or out of this room? From where you are, you can't see within the range of the light that you have right now. It's kind of this long, large room. I would say even at 60 feet clicks, you would still be a bit beyond your threshold as to what is on the fourth wall away from Mm. the entrance. I think Clix is going to start walking forward, but... No, point. Clicks, don't break the fourth wall. Clix <laughs> <laughs> smashes into the fourth wall. No, um, Amazing. Uh, on the way, though, Clix points out the parchment and says, this might be something for you to Andromedy. But I'm going to move past that table area and just keep mm-hmm. going. Do I start to see anything come into focus? Yeah, go ahead and give me investigation. Nice. Thank God it's that. <laughs> Motherfucker. That's a nine total on a two dice roll. It hurts. You notice a bunch of broken vials and and pots and small little cauldrons, little alchemical devices of some kind in various states of disarray. As well, one of the nearby pits you're able to just catch a passing glance at. It looks like there's some sort of collection of tattered rags or molded straw or something lining the bottom of this pit, which is probably like 15 or 20 feet deep. By the time you get to this workstation, which sits about halfway into this room, you can see the other side, and indeed there is another tunnel that exits out. There's another way out here. See anything interesting in those papers? I'm a fast reader, but not an immediate one. I'm going to go take a look at the papers. Andromedy, go ahead and give me investigation. I'm going to give myself guidance on this. This seems like it could be relevant. Oh, and that's uh, not going to help that much. That's only an 11. A lot of these notes are in a language that is sort of a variation on Sylvan that you would be able to identify as being written by Gorgons. On an 11, you're not sure. You can't assume, because you don't know, but... You can't tell whether these were written by whoever was here or these were taken and brought here from somewhere else. Regardless, they talk about some sort of ferrican alchemical experiments, which involve using various blood ritual and blood medicine for the sake of empowering warriors, as well as restoring seemingly mortal wounds. It appears these notes, they're difficult to decipher, but they are ancient Farrakhan rites passed down through Gorgons on the use of blood in potent alchemy. On an 11, 
The only other thing you see that's not in complete ruin in this space is a single vial of some sort of dark red liquid. Darker than blood, almost black liquid. Can I study it without, like... That's a good question. Yeah, without using, like, identify or something. You pick up this vial, and it's it's small, but you look at it, and go ahead and give me either a arcana or medicine check. Okay. Give myself a d4 on this one as well. Maybe I can get some idea what's going on here. Nope, dice don't like me. 8 plus 7 is 15. On a 15, this is certainly not human blood, and this is probably not any other humanoid race's blood. 15 was just the DC, so you kind of think for a moment, and you put two and two together about Gorgons and Ferrica. You can only assume that this is basilisk blood. Ah, uh, yes, basilisk blood. This can be used to counteract petrification if applied properly. And so, just mechanically, so you know what you're looking at here, it will take a medicine check to use. It's not like a potion where you just use it and it works. And it's a one-use cure for petrification. Uh, are either of you skilled in the healing arts? Look at us. (laughs) (laughs) Califex, (laughs) standing beside the towering Gron, says, Well, I didn't have a lot of training, considering everything that happened in Akros, but I was beginning to be trained in medicine by some of the Legion forces. Then you stand the best chance of knowing how to use this. Uh, Don't get petrified. And I hand it over to him. I will try my best. Shit. He's the only one without plot armor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's that could, you could be you could be real stone cold about this one, DM. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so it's so bad it's good. It's so bad it's good. It's good. It's just bad. <laughs> Where are his hit points right now? Low. So you have this thing, clicks pointed out the space beyond. How do you proceed? Crown first. If you insist. Oh wait, I've got the most hit points. Maybe I should go first. Maybe. Yeah, but I can take a hit better than you can. Proceeding out of this chamber, you find the tunnel begins branching off at various places. All the same construction and not seeming like a cavern tunnel, but more of a kind of built-out space. It's at this point that I'm going to have us transition into a little bit of a skill challenge. The creation's eye is able to keep a small yet passive beat on the compass direction you are supposed to be heading, but at the first intersection you come to, out of this room, it splits off into three directions, and you can just passively get the sense that to choose one over the other out of randomness would maybe be quite dubious. And so what you are trying to do is to overcome being overwhelmed by the amount of various tunnels and different options that you're presented with in which to proceed forward. Some could lead to traps, some could lead to other rooms that could be either bad rooms or good rooms, depending on how you roll. But this is more or less a skill challenge that will be about how you navigate through these winding corridors. Who would like to go first? I like to think I'm pretty good at winding through corridors oh mythology (laughs) joke nice that's not just a stereotype so gran what would you like to do huh so i'm looking at three corridors in front of me yes and i need to choose a skill that i think is going to help me not get you all lost right (laughs) oh okay let's do perception i'm gonna do perception great so i'm gonna look at all three and see if they have any sort of variation between the three or if they are all identical. See if there's anything, any sort of clue that would lead us down one or the other. Great. Take a d4 on this. Okay. That's nice. That is 21. Awesome. On a 21, you approach each one. You inspect beyond the threshold of this fork. At the first 
It takes a moment, but as your ear adjusts to the silence of this space, you can hear that of a swirling wind in the distance. You move to the next, and you look, and you focus through the light, through the dim light, and beyond into the darkness. And far beyond you, I think you see figures who are slowly moving about the far distance. Finally, a third one, you look, and you listen, and it appears quiet. The safest of the three. Gron narrows his eyes and just kind of looks between each of these passageways for a while. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And then points at the third one this way. Very cool. That is one success. And you continue through another one of these passageways through this darkness. You are now deep below the Kragma at this point, and the three of you come to a small room, which in the center of it has a large pool set into the stone floor. This room is small, and so you can see every wall around, and there appears to be two ways out of this chamber. As well, Passively, you can all tell that that pool is probably not filled with water. What do you all do? When you say the pool is probably not filled with water, is it, like, obviously blood? Well, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Sure. I'll go ahead and do that with a 26. Hell yeah. Making my dirty 20 look bad. Oh, no, that's still great. The two of you can definitely tell this pool is filled with blood. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, distinct ferrous scent. Exactly. As well, clicks you notice scattered around the edges of this room, kind of piled in various places along the wall, are bones and remains of long-dead figures. Anything in those remains worth taking? Well, on a 26. Ooh, what you, you got <laughs> for me, shopkeep? Now that you mention it. <laughs> it's just bones all right however clicks you see something that andromedy is unable to pick out in the pool itself and that is that below this probably foot or foot and a half pool of blood resting at the bottom of this pool is a layer of gold coins i am going to just take an arrow and kind of stick it into the blood to see if anything happens to it. If there's any like reaction, if it's like dangerous to touch. You dip an arrow in and nothing seems to happen. Let's grab the gold, baby. Okay. No, Jimmy didn't like that. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I was, uh, sometimes I, <laughs> sometimes I make no. a face and then figure out how am I going to say this face. Yeah. Oh, audio medium. Gron looks on as clicks begins splashing around in the blood. (laughs) Describe how you go about this. I kneel down at the edge of the pool. I'm like taking this shit from a shopping mall wishing well. I'm just going to go in and grab it. dip your whole arm into the pool. Whole arm's going in. I'm scooping up some coins. Clicks, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. The arrow. The arrow. (laughs) The arrow. The arrow doesn't have a mind. It's an inanimate goddamn object. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's a nat 20. <laughs> Fuck oh, you. Oh, <laughs> good. No consequences for your foolish actions. <laughs> to get some gold I don't need. <laughs> and there's the nat 20 of the night. Cool. Uh. <laughs> All right, how much gold do I get that I don't care about? <laughs> Amazing. Go ahead and roll me... A commerce throw. Go ahead and roll me 2d6. So one and a four. Okay, five. You find 500 gold. Oh, cash prizes. And as you take it in your mind, you hear a familiar laugh. (laughs) You just can't help yourself. I knew you went to Lost Gods. Look, I found 300 gold here. Just kidding. I found 500. Clix is going to share it with the party. Ah, okay, great. He's going to give 100 gold to everybody and keep 200 for now. Cool. Yeah, okay, I can do math. There's still a hundred gold unaccounted for. Uh, what do you? No, no. Uh, Califax. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, Cal- yeah. Califax is here. I uh, take the bloody coins. That will have no repercussions whatsoever. Andromedy, as Clix goes to hand you these, they have a very strong sense 
of necromancy. Whoops. You knew exactly what you were doing. (laughs) (laughs) Is it like a a specific sort of necromancy? Like a necromancy that I would be able to replicate? Perhaps. Yeah. Gron, I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Califex, using his divine sense as a paladin, feels this same sensation and looks to Andromedy. Nat one, three. Cool. As Clix goes to hand me this gold, I will say, while I am beyond the point of feeling like I can chastise you for your avarice, I would warn you that this gold is more than definitely cursed. The saving throw which Clix passed, Gron fails miserably. And unfortunately, you are cursed. And while cursed in this way, you have disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws involving wisdom. That's fine. Wasn't using much wisdom anyway. So now I'm basically guaranteed to fail wisdom saving throws. So this will be fun. (laughs) This will be fun. Here we go. (laughs) Looking through the rest of the space and the two ways leading out, who would like to take the next leg of the skill challenge? I'll go for it. You said how many ways out? Two. Okay, Mr. Cursed Gold. I'm going to use survival to run, make a choice and run down one and tell the group to follow. Okay. That's pretty wild. Do take a D4 on this. Thank you. (laughs) Clicks on a gut instinct. You choose one of these pathways and dash through it, mustering as much survival instinct, as much as you have prowess, to hopefully make it through to the other side unscathed. Go ahead and roll me your survival check. Trust me, everybody. I have prowess. Dirty 20. Holy shit. Clicks. You leap and bound your way down this tunnel, and before the rest of the party can even begin to make their way behind you, you trigger several traps. A pitfall that goes from wall to wall, several darts flying across, a large boulder that comes from the ceiling and drops directly down onto the ground. On a dirty 20, you fly by all of them completely unscathed, and in doing so, have triggered all of them. When I get to the end, I'm going to turn around and just be like, Fixed it for you. I heard the sound of simple machines being activated. <laughs> You're welcome. You're very fortunate to have survived, Mr. Cursed Gold. <laughs> Califex looks to the two of you and says, The entire time you have been on your journey, has he always acted in this manner? No, he's, he's actually shown surprisingly a bit more restraint. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of takes his head in his hand. <laughs> Very accurate. (laughs) Absolutely stunning. So, with the traps all triggered, the party is able to pass another successful skill challenge. You find yourselves, after passing through this space, traps triggered and all, (laughs) in another small chamber. This one appears to be a crude armory of sorts, and in this small space there are tunnel exits on all four walls. Everybody go ahead and give me perception checks. 22. Uh, That'll be a 9 for me. 19. Gron, were you rolling with disadvantage? Shit. No, I wasn't. 9. Looking about, you can see there's a lot of crude weapon racks and various anvils and workbenches but there are hardly any weapons here. Clicks on year 19, you can only assume that perhaps whatever stores were kept in this room were all taken by the Minotaurs who left out of Death Bell Canyon and attacked Akros. Even so, on a 19, you're able to find a handful of simple weapons, as well as one very finely made round shield, sort of glimmers in the dim light a bit and it has the face of a large monster or demon looking figure on the front of it worked into the metal does califax use shields does any do any of us i use a shield califax has a shield yeah and so does andromedy which one do you want this points to it do i sense any curses from it you don't sense any magical sources from demons aberrations or undead 
No, fair enough. Seems finely made. I don't suppose we have the time for me to truly ascertain its magical properties. Andromedy, go ahead and roll me a survival check. Sure. 18. So if you wanted a ritual cast identify on an 18, you think you could probably take that time. I'll identify it. What's this shield? This is a plus one shield. This is a shield of Athreos, from which once a day you can cast protection from evil and good. Hmm. All right. The demonic emblem hearkening those demons Athreos has been known to either deal with or slay as they invade his territory of the great rivers that ring the world. Skalifex, this shield might be of use to you. It has the ability to protect you from unnatural creatures, as well as its enchantment giving a bit of enhanced protection. Andromedy, I certainly shouldn't. Don't you think that sort of thing would be directly best served under your hands? Perhaps, although I do not find myself quite so often in the thick of things. If you do not object to my having it, and you do not want it for yourself, I can carry it. Go ahead and roll Persuasion. Okay. 22. He looks like he's putting up a kind front, and then realizing the state of the melee group, as it were, takes the shield. I hope it serves you well. Thank you. You're far too kind. And his AC goes up by one. Cool. Who would like to take the last leg of the skill challenge? I think it's my turn. I'm going to use history to try to determine the correct path. Andromedy has probably read some things about the Krogmaw, has collected some knowledge about how to navigate this place. Sure. So I'm going to see if any of that is useful in this particular moment. I'll give myself guidance on this. 14 plus 721. Holy shit. Oh my god. So historical. You guys are killing this. Andromedy. You recall various tales and histories about the places where war bands like to gather within the wastes. Quite a bit written about the histories of the Rage Gore Minotaurs, Death Bell Canyon, and indeed of the Kragma. And the Kragma itself is not just a large swath of caves in which the Rage Gore gather and do battle amongst themselves and make these tremendous blood sacrifices to Mogus. It is also a sort of war camp for those the strongest amongst the Rage Gore who battle for supremacy and right over it. And as such, you know, it is rather labyrinthine, and the depths you can sense you are beginning to approach. And you think that straightforward towards this now becoming stronger and stronger errant dark magic is indeed the correct path. Hmm. I think the most straightforward solution will be the suitable one in this case. Grom first. All right. Straightforward. You sure that that's correct? All of my recollection of all of my study of this place leads me to conclude so. Then again, the histories of minotaurs compiled by humans are somewhat unreliable. But uh, with some cross-referencing between the uh, studies of the diplomat, um, uh, uh, somebody. <laughs> yeah, who's that guy? Go look him up right now. Um, 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 uh, let's, uh, Pythalaeus. Oh um, yes. The diplomat Pythalaeus, who uh, visited many of the Minotaur tribes and, and tried to learn something of their history and culture, should suggest... Gron and Califex begin dozing off in this fucking lecture. The correct way is forward. Gron first. Califex immediately looks to Gron and says, And do they always act in this manner on your travels? Consistently. Always. Remarkable. What a unique adventuring party. And with that... Gron leads the party forward, having completed successfully all three skill challenges. Gron, after a time, this tunnel comes to an end at the threshold of an enormous cave. You can only just see a bit of the space beyond this tunnel, and it just 
fades into darkness, leading you to believe that it's a giant space. Andromedy, before Gron can even pass beyond the threshold of this tunnel, you immediately get a very powerful necrotic sense from the threshold of the space itself. Proceed with caution. There may be... Uh, if you or anyone would like to make either an investigation or an arcana check. Twelve. There may be foul magic, but I don't know what it is, really. Anything from clicks? Uh, I got an eight, so there might be something happening. What do you all do? I mean, the name of the guy is the Undying. So foul magic probably means we're going the right way. If he didn't die, we won't die, right? <laughs> sure. Fine. That. <laughs> if that's what it takes to get you through this door. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. So cool. Let's go. I proceed into the foul magic. There's that wisdom throw you gotta make with disadvantage. Gron, you pass beyond this threshold, and I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Whoa. 17. Okay. A 17 fails as all of you see a enormous black sigil on the threshold of this space, a symbol of hopelessness. And Gron, you become immediately overwhelmed with an unwavering despair. So much so that for the duration, you can't attack or target anyone with any attacks or harmful abilities or spells or other magical effects. Holy shit. Does Gron look visibly in a sense of despair? What am I despairing about? Everything. Your situation, this <laughs> journey, facing Marukios. You have no idea how you can possibly muster the strength to overcome it. Gron drops to his knees. Uh, why are we doing any of this? He's called the Undying. We're not going to be able to kill him. Gron. Gron, this isn't, this isn't like you. Uh, Clix is going to start walking over to Gron. Uh, Gron is about 10 feet into this space and uh, on the ground. Clix, you walk over to Gron. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. <laughs> 14. Don't look at me. Clix, <laughs> you look at Gron and his entire body, all this fur and skin and clothes is... Even in the darkness, like a shade darker. It's as if he is literally covered in a shadow. You can also see a bit of the space that you're in right now, Clicks. I'll just give that to you a little bit. And that is that within this cave, you are on a large platform or overlook. A much larger version of the small ones that you found in the first chamber of the Kragma. And there are these two enormous pillars that stand maybe 10 feet tall on either side of a very narrow staircase that goes switchback down the side of this platform into complete darkness. You can't tell what's beyond, on that roll at least, but you can tell that there are a fair bit of markings on the pillars, which stand maybe about 40 feet away from you at this point. Clix leans down a little bit to be eye level with Gron, because Gron's now on the floor, and just looks him right in the eye. Gron. Takes a minute, and then slaps him really hard across the face. <laughs> roll an attack. Yeah, you go. Oh, God. That is a... Uh, 11 to hit, which doesn't hit. Doesn't hit. You slap him, it has no effect. Okay. <laughs> Look at me. Look behind you. That's darkness up ahead. Okay? We need you to lead the way. We've always needed you to lead the way. Lead yourselves. Don't. Just leave me cut, here. Cut the shit. There is no way we are going to be doing that. You're sitting here prattling in your own slobbering filth. Okay? Drooling around. And we don't have time for this. You need to step it up. You need to be better, okay? You've gotten your best friend. You've made new friends. What more do you want? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. He slaps him again. Make another attack. There it is. That's a, that's a 23. Great. What's your strength score? Two. Gron, you take two damage. Okay. Andromedy, what are you doing while this is happening? Uh, Andromedy, like, is probably trying to find a moment to interject, but Clix is handling it in his own way. Yeah. Found his own methods. 
<laughs> found his own way. <laughs> so this time when Clicks slaps Gron, Gron reels back and then looks back at Clicks, fire in his eyes, and just screams in his face, Did you have to use the claws? Amazing. <laughs> and enters his rage. Clicks takes three fire damage. I'm going to say for the purposes of distance, Andromeda and Califax do not. However... For the series of events that is about to unfold, I'm going to need all of us to roll some initiative. 16. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to repeat it for Andy. Clix is in this combat, and he has rolled a 16 on the initiative. <laughs> because Andy skipped me like <laughs> twice last game. <laughs> Andromeda is in this encounter. They've rolled an 11. <laughs> Gron is not even really part of this at all. He's just... Uh wallowing in his own self-pity with a six. Not really self-pity. It hurts Gron that he can't be there for his friends. Gron, you lash out towards clicks, and your fire doesn't just catch clicks. It catches something else very close by in this space. Clicks, you can't help but see a sort of shadow kind of come off of Gron momentarily, as in your mind, clicks, you hear the following eerily familiar voice saying come now my feeties did you think it would be this easy to escape your purpose <laughs> on initiative 20 clicks i need you to make a wisdom saving throw got it all right 13 Oh, clicks! you do this with advantage as you are standing right next to Gron. I just rolled a seven. Gron, even in your state of hopelessness, as well as Andromedy and Califex, can very plainly see Clix's arms kind of go slack and his posture relax greatly. As swirling out of the shadows around Gron and Clix, you all see a figure billowing out you see a cloak of black and purple with a golden mantle around the shoulders and clicks for the first time you see his head as this figure lowers his hood to reveal a large ornate golden helm with the face of a returned mask he speaks out you have been given power as promised to destroy your father and now it is time clicks. You all hear this voice as it scratches out this ashen voice. It's time to pay that price. Acting next on initiative 16 is clicks. You have just failed to save against suggestion, and in paying your price for power to the god of deception, on your turn you have to try whatever you can to take the Eye of Creation from Andromedy. I, I walk up to Andromedy. Andromedy, as Clix approaches, you can very plainly tell a immensely powerful source of enchantment magic. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker. Jeff, Jeffy, I told you. <laughs> All right, get I, told, you I told you it wasn't over. <laughs> All right. I know this may be too much to ask, and that's fair. I get it. But I need you in this moment to trust me. Gron can't be helped unless I take creation's eye. I need it. We need it. For our friend. Let me roll deception. Are you deceiving or are you persuading? It's up to you. Oh, deceiving. Oh my god. Don't don't tell me what the roll is. Um, send it to me, actually. Andromedy roll inside, please. I'm not giving any secrets. That's a 13. Andromedy, you have no idea who this figure that is apparated before you is in this moment, but Clix seems to be incredibly truthful. I believe that you believe that. Sick. But I think you have been ensorcelled. Ensorcelled? By what? The, the cursed gold? Look, 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 look. Clix takes out the 200 gold and throws it on the ground. This is me. We need this. He needs this. We can't move on without this. Just leave me here. Andromedy, it's your turn. Go ahead and give me a history or religion check. 
against this strange figure. 26. <laughs> you motherfucker. Okay. Cards on the table, Andromeda, you certainly would have heard tale of this person. Unbelievably, you are looking before someone known to be a bit of an oracle themselves. This is a figure known as Atris, and you know that they are a close ally of Phoenix. I take off the crown. I hand it to Clix. I say, Oracle of Phoenix, I wondered what mischief you would be attempting. There will be no one left to lie to, nothing left to steal, no rubes left to con in a world devoured by the titans. Why must you make yourself an obstacle to us? As you say this and do this, this figure Atris looks down at you from his billowing mantle and cloak and says towards you, Andromeda. Well, the oracles of Akros joining together. And I wasn't invited. I'm offended. Flame speakers, storm augurs, even this voice of fate. And he looks towards Clix. They're all so overbearing to their heroes, aren't they? I prefer to operate in half truths. It's much more satisfying that way. As he gestures towards Clix to approach him. Andromeda, do you do anything else? Yes. Andromeda will say, Those who traffic in lies and misdirection shall inherit a world of illusion and darkness. And can Atris make me a con save as I cast blindness on him? Very, very cool. Yeah, that's why we entered initiative. Okay, that's a con save. Yeah. That is a nat 20 plus 3. Plus, plus. It's a nat 20. Okay. Sorry. Fine. <laughs> uh, he looks down at you. <sighs> Illusion. Illusion. <gasps> That's a wonderful idea. He's going to use a legendary action. And in response, Andromedy. I need you to make an intelligence save. Is he casting a spell? Yes, he is. Counter spell. Just third level counter spell. Right. Against this fifth level spell slot, I do need you to make a roll, which I believe is a fifth, 15. 15 using your intelligence modifier. Yeah, easily. Uh, 19 plus... Sick. Absolutely sick. Four. Very, very cool. Uh, you counter his. You counter his. Uh, his phantasmal force. His hand kind of recoils a bit as the illusion fades quickly. <sighs> You're going to regret that. We go to Gron and Califex. Gron, you are still in this state of hopelessness. What do you do? Don't think I can do anything but move. Everything is an attack. I don't have any other stuff. <laughs> so Gron. <laughs> Gron is going to crawl back towards Califex. And his rage ends. You move towards Califex, towards the entrance of this chamber, and he rushes forward. Gron! Gron, we'll find a way to fix this! It's all right! And as he stands in front of you, he readies an attack against Atris. Can I give him the help action? Yeah, you can. That's not a harmful thing. So you give him the help action. What do you do to help his attack? I don't know how you want to word this, but I think that just being in this pathetic of a state right mm -hmm. in front of him, putting him in this mm -hmm. position where it's kind of all resting on him, mm -hmm. is the help action. Cool. You give him the help action. He's going to chuck a spear at this figure who is floating in the air. Do have advantage. He just crit. He got a 6 and a 20. Good for him. Yeah, he hurls this spear, sensing tremendous evil from this person. And he's going to pour some smites into this. So you see the tip of Califex's spear as it launches through the air, burst with radiant light, with an inspiring light, as he uses his Oath of Glory feature, Inspiring Smite. And he's going to roll damage here. So that's a bunch of D8s. Hold on. Uh, math. Math is hard. Um, 
You see this inspiring smite burst forth, dealing 27 radiant damage, a pile of radiant damage against this foe, as well as some piercing damage. But more importantly, Gron, you regain 12 temporary hit points. He doesn't like that one bit. You see this radiant spear pierce the side of Atris, and he's going to use another legendary action to respond towards Califex. Well, Glyce, you seem to have gathered quite the party of heroes around you. It's really quite unfortunate for them. You see him point a, another hand towards Califex, and you can see on the floor around Califex a billowing, shadowy portal begin to open. Califex needs to make a charisma save. Failing this save... Gron and everyone else, you watch as Califex disappears. Banished. Gron, no! And gone. Uh, Gron just starts pounding on the ground. Oh, that's not going to help Gron at all. That is back to the top. Atris's turn. He turns towards Clix. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Clix, you hear this voice, this familiar voice from this figure... That of a once humble, yet albeit mysterious, street prophet who sent you on your path towards the god of deception, now in this moment, much more agitated. You thought you could play at deceiving the god of deception. Oh, dear Glix, the eater of hope, the Orada, even your Leonin friend, even your father. And with a flick of his wrist, he's going to cast Hold Person on Andromeda. Okay. That is a wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. 25. Damn. Absolute. My best save. Absolute fucking damn. <laughs> yeah, you say. <laughs> I don't suppose Andromeda's standing within five feet of Gron. Uh, at this point, Gron. I don't think Gron so. backed up towards the two, towards Andromeda and Califex. I'm gonna say you're nearby. You're not within five feet. Okay. You're maybe ten or fifteen away. Got it. But keep keep that in mind as this unfolds. Well, fuck. Okay. <laughs> save against that. Clicks. He is now billowing directly next to you. As he levitates off the ground, it is your turn. Okay, is the suggestion done with? No, he's gesturing as if you're supposed to give it to him, this sort of pay the price command. Hmm. Being unfamiliar with how suggestion works, do I have any other thing I can do this turn, or do I have to give it to him? Generally, you do the thing to the best of your ability. You do the thing to the best of your ability, but it's suggestion and not charm, and so... If there is any trick that clicks can think of while simultaneously obeying that command, you can do that. Oh, shit. Uh, he had to make a con save, which, while still with advantage, still matters, because Califex poured a shitload of damage into him. <coughs> yeah, he just passes the suggestion and still holds. There is nothing I can do but give the creation's eye over. Correct, and then you can stab him. That was my plan. Yeah. You give him the thing, and then we can then we can deal with this problem. Gonna hand him Creation's eye, and immediately try to stab him in his side. Does a sixteen hit? A sixteen will hit. Which weapon are you attacking him with? Short sword. Eight piercing damage. I'll go ahead and offhand. Okay. Nineteen hits. Great. Additional one damage. Uh, concentration checks. Half of one is still one. Yep. With advantage, that's a 19 plus mod. I'll do the second one. With advantage, that's a 13 plus mod, 16. Looking down at you, clicks. He gives a curt nod. Waves his hand in the air. His form shimmers. Andromeda, you would be able to easily recognize this as invisibility. Does Andromeda counter? I can't. I used my reaction already. And disappears. Oh, it's all fucked. Clicks, you hear in your mind. All the means to our master's end. All the while you follow this prophet's words of hope and destiny. Our master sees this world for 
what it is. Your little hero's journey has brought you close to one of the most powerful relics of this world. And now our master wishes us to bring it to him. Ever the useful bomb. And the voice fades. Clicks, go ahead and give me a insight check. Twelve. At the end of your turn, on a twelve, you can tell he's still somewhere in this cave, but you're not sure where. As we go to Endron. I'm trying to think. All right, I'm going to head out of this tunnel and sort of into the larger cavern. And there's, like, stairs leading down. About 30 feet away, there are stairs that descend down the side of this platform into darkness. If you want to give me a free perception check, I'll give you something more after that. Uh, 11. Even with the light source, which I assume is traveling with you, whether it be Scully or some other means, on an 11, you can barely glimpse the beginning of a winding and vast labyrinth. Can I see, like, the exit on the other side? From up here, it's too far away. Okay. It's like these stairs lead down and into, like, the first hallway of this labyrinth. All right. I'm going to get to where the top of the labyrinth is. Okay. Right before it starts going down into it. Okay. If that's within my movement range. I would say it would be right at the end of your full movement. So, like, with a move and a dash, I could get there? Yeah. Okay. Then that's as far as I'll get. Okay. Go ahead and give me a arcana check as you get closer to this labyrinth. Sure. 14. The walls of this structure while on the surface appear to be made of stone, shimmer and move like themselves being made of shadows, completely opaque, forming these black mist-like walls that make up this labyrinth. Okay. Anything else? Say or do? No, I'm just trying to chase after this guy. Bottom of the round, Gron. Gron's still wallowing. He's gone and he took the crown. And Califex is gone too. And now Andromeda's left us. Clicks, just leave me here to die. <laughs> oh my god, it's so sad. Uh, <laughs> do you do you move or do you just stay where you are? I like don't think there's any reason for me to move. Sure. Yeah, this is a absolutely awful moment for Gron. It's horrible, and it seems like a pretty uh, suitable place to die. Oh you know, that's God. what Gron thinks is happening, and Gron's just going to die here. That's absolutely horrible. As Gron wallows, clicks you hear echoing across this chamber. It was always coming to this. Your mother, your hunger for vengeance. One pawn to replace another for our dark lord. He shall bask in this triumph over the fools that call themselves righteous and all-knowing gods. His turn passes as we go to Clix. Clix waves away those words. Looking at Gran says, I'm not going to leave you, but... And then speaks out to the cave. Phoenix, you I have no use for anymore. You I will be leaving. You revel in the thought of using people to meet your own ends never realizing that the skills you teach them prime them to leave you. And in fact, my devotion belongs to someone more deserving. Living a life without purpose, not understanding what the meaning of everything was, I feel it only appropriate to cast you aside, denounce you formally, and commit myself to someone who uses secrecy for the purpose of shining light and understanding on the world. Someone like Krufix. Oh, fuck yes. Insane. Amazing. And fucking fantastic. <laughs> Clicks. Go ahead and make me a fucking persuasion check with advantage. 18. Uh, total? Total. Clicks, in this moment, you see the form of Atris apparate about 40 feet into the labyrinth, floating above it. Andromedy, maybe about 20 feet from you, and he shouts out at these damning, blasphemous words. Fool, defy us all you wish. The gods have no power in this matter. 
This is only a stopgap to his end. In this moment, in a flash, clicks. You see the entire room as if it were alit by regular, ordinary daylight. You see this entire labyrinth as it twists and turns, made of shadows. You see Atris. You see these two columns, which, on passing glance, depict some sort of myth or legend of a hero traveling through a labyrinth and coming across a large, gorgon-like bull, this shadowed figure chasing him, and the tale ends with the hero dying, being devoured destroyed by this monster. But as you look about this entire room, you see that that too is an illusion, and the hero triumphs, makes it to the center of the labyrinth, and jumps through a hole into the underworld. You see the ceiling, a large fissure. Your vision extends up, and you see that it leads out into the wilderness. You see shadow pouring out of this fissure, possibly the source of the tainted malice that has covered Death Bellow Canyon and the region beyond. But finally, everyone, you see spectral arms apparate in this moment around clicks. You lose all piety to Phoenix, and you gain piety with Crufix, god of horizons. How much do I gain? You gain a full ten... And these spectral arms function as two mage hands. And you see, after taunting at Atris and his god, him floating in front of you. In this moment, in this divine summoning, calling Crufix into the space, you can plainly see that he's holding the crown in his hand. He's not stood on his person in in place as of now. That will remind you that you've got your mage hands there. In that case, Clix looks at these things, confused at first, and then focuses in on the creation's eye and looks back down at the hands and just gives them a, a nod, as if directing yes. them on what to do. And the hands fly forward. And how far away is this prick? I know it says 30 feet. And I know I said 40 feet before. I'm just going to let this happen. And the hands lunge at their target and try to wrest it from his hand. I'm going to call this sleight of hand. Thank you for being generous. I will go ahead and roll that. That's a 28. Does it pass? It passes. <laughs> Even with a 19 plus 1, clicks, your mage hands now hold the crown. You used their full movement to do that, so they're basically holding it next to him. Would you like to do anything else, bonus action or otherwise? No. Okay. Richard Pawn, we've got to make this personal. He is going to cast nothing because he used all of his spell slots. Uh, there's a lot of day. Okay. Clicks, so what's your health at right now? 35. You see him look at you and look at the crown and then look back at you as he speaks some word, some word of power that you do not comprehend only so much. Yourself. It wasn't power word kill, but I like that you use this anyways. Any sort of power word is worth a counter spell. That is true. He goes to utter this word of power, whatever it is. So it's fifth level? Yeah. Uh, I need an 11. Hmm, that's not an 11. It's a two. Oh, oh, what's this? What's this? It's an 18. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. I see how it is. Damn. That horrible power word, whatever it was, <laughs> vanishes as Andromedy from below. Counterspells. Uh mass of tangled threads wrap around Atris's mask's mouth hole, I guess, and bind it shut so no magical utterance can escape. <laughs> Amazing. I believe that was a reaction to Clix's turn. Andromedy, after using this counterspell, we go to your turn. He is approximately 20 feet at a diagonal above you. Okay, very good. Also, I should, I should just clarify this. The room is only fully illuminated to clicks. Okay. How like the servants of that fugitive from death to run away? No. Return Return to us. And on that, I'm going to command on the word return. That's uh, wisdom? Wisdom, yep. Okay. That is only an 11. 
That will not pass. However, what is your save, DC? That's a cleric spell. 14. You see, as his head kind of turns and jerks at your words, this writhing shadow sweep across his form. He invokes Dark One's own luck, and it's going to try and beat the save. So he's adding an additional 10 for this. He only got a 2. Oh my god. Whoa. Wow. What? What is... <sighs> no! No! He tries to twist and shout his way out of this, but the command holds. No more running for you. Twist and shout. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Um, anything else from Andromeda? You know what? Yeah. Bonus action, mothball. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, go for it. With team carry. In this fucking, team uh, carry. In this fucking dark ass place, fucking labyrinth of shadows all around you. Your little homunculus. Searly shoots a mothball. That's 12 plus 7, 19 hits. That hits. Okay. And he's not resistant to whatever this is. He takes five force damage. Yeah. Nope, he's resistant to his force damage. And that's my turn. We're back to Gron. Gron, you see all of this transpiring, even in your hopelessness. I'm still hopeless, though. You're still hopeless. He does have to make a con save against Seerly's little little action there. Um, oh, yeah, right. Concentration. No way. No way. I'm going to send you a picture of these. A one and a two. Ooh. Oh my god. After he is attacked by Cyrilly Gron, the hopelessness in a snap fades. Now it's Gron's turn. Now it's Gron's turn. As the hopelessness fades from your mind. Gron snaps out of it. Where is he now? 40 feet in the air. He was just commanded to go towards... I'm going to leave it up to Andromeda. Either towards Andromeda or towards Clicks. Towards me. So kind of down towards Andromeda, who is on a staircase below this platform. It is 30 feet plus another 20 or so down. Gron snaps out of it, sees that his skill set could be of use here, and runs directly at Atris. When he reaches the ledge, he's going to leap. Yes. leap of, take a leap of faith as a melee attack with the big great axe against Atris. So here's that athletics check. That is 17. Total? Yep. Okay. You take your running jump, and in front of you, you can see him getting closer, getting closer, and then above you, moving away as you fall. When I'm just close enough, I'm gonna activate my rage. Okay. He'll take three fire damage and then... Makes con save. Okay, that was close. That was a one and an 18. Okay. Okay. And then I fall. And now I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, which I think in rage you would make with it. I think just as a barbarian, I make with advantage. Yeah, I think barbarians As long as I can have, see. Okay. What is it? Danger yep, sense? Danger sense. Ten. That fails. So you land prone about 20 feet or so into this labyrinth. You still see Andromeda off a ways away from you as you take 16 bludgeoning damage halved to 8. Well, that sucked. <laughs> uh, but Gron's back in it as we go back to the top. He can't use his reaction and he has to come towards Andromeda, so that's what he does as he screams, Fools! You think you can be victorious! Here against the might of Phoenix. As he says this all the while, Andromeda, he is now directly next to you. All right. He has to use his whole turn to do that, right? I think with approach, they just need to use their movement. He could still take his action. You see he draws a dagger, this black blade from beneath his cloak. He's going to try and attack you, Andromeda, with it. That is a 13 plus 5. 18 hits. And you take a whopping 8 piercing damage. And I need you to make a con save. 21. That passes. An additional 4 poison damage. Very cool. You've royally fucked him. Clicks, it's your turn. Your mage hands still hold the crown where they were. And so you have managed to separate Atris from the crown in this moment. 
Where is he exactly? He's now next to Andromeda, approximately 20 feet directly below you. I'm going to jump down and attack. Go ahead and give me a quick athletics check. Athletics check. Uh, th- Sorry. Uh, a- 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 oh, way better. Let's do 18 then. Yeah, you jump down heroically to Andromeda's side. And now he is... He's engaged. That's right. There it is. Ooh, 18 on the dice for the first roll, but let's just see if it's a natty. Nope, it ain't a natty, but I definitely hit. We're going to leave with the dagger. Uh, 13 piercing damage. Very cool. He's going to make another con save. Passes that. And now I'll go ahead and attack with my short sword. Go for it. 16 again. Also hits. Nine piercing damage. Cool. The con save. That was closer. That was a 7 plus 3 at a tie. That still holds, but wearing thin here, you can see he is beginning to look not only agitated, not only deeply frustrated, all sense of illusion, all sense of mystery gone. Cloak, torn, armor, dented. You are wearing into this man as we go to Gron. So he's reachable now? He is 20 feet above you. On the bottom of the stairs, you can run up and be easily within reach. Oh, I can get into melee range. And I'll do that. I'm going to use my movement. I'm going to use half my movement to stand up, brush myself off, turn, and with the rage of Mogus in my eye, charge directly up these stairs. Take a swing. Hell yeah. Recklessly. That's a 26 to hit. That'll fucking hit. Haven't rolled any attacks yet this game. I don't remember what numbers to use. That's 11 slashing damage. 2 necrotic damage. Next attack. That is 23 to hit. Hits. Alright, and the second one does 12 slashing damage. This is why I try to cast some more bro. Because <laughs> this guy don't have a lot of health. Gron, you wail into this guy twice with your great axe and He looks extremely bloody, tattered robes hanging by his pale human form as he floats off this ledge. Oh, he's got to make these con saves. Two of these. Nine plus three still does it. And uh, 14 plus three. Okay, anything else from God? I'm going to push him with my horns. Ooh, yeah, go for it. Push him ten feet up the stairs. Yeah. That just happens, right? It's a strength save against, I believe, the DC is 16. Fails. That's a 10. Not strong. Okay, so I push him 10 feet. Great. And that's 10 feet away from Andromeda and Clicks. Right. Can I take an attack of opportunity? You sure can. Sweet deal. 16. What a 16. Hits. 8 piercing damage. Is this with the dagger or with the sword? Sword. As he is... Knocked back by Gron, slashed by clicks. No, no, this, this is not the end. Fools, Phoenix shall not forget this. You, you will forever be haunted by his return. When you are dead and gone, they will claim his prize. You can see the form of Atris begin to flicker in and out. Strange, shadowy, yet Nixian starlight in its place. Andromeda, if you want to go ahead and make a Arcana check. 13. Whatever this strange magic is that is distorting his form, you can't tell per se, but you get a, an inkling that this figure may be not truly Atris himself. Mm. It's his turn. He's going to shoot an Eldritch Blast. He gets three of these. He's going to shoot one each at the three of you. That's a 19 to hit clicks. Yep. That is a... What is this? Only a 10 to hit Andromedy. Uh, no. And fuck me. And that one Uh. plus eight and nine to hit Ron. Yep. Um, so from about 20 feet away, clicks, you take 12 force damage okay. as these bolts of eldritch energy shoot into you. Glad I used my reaction to attack. That's, that was good. <laughs> hey. Hey, it happens. You, sometimes you that, do it, it and you blow it. 
that's just that's just what happens sometimes. Um, sometimes you use your counter spell on the wrong spell, <laughs> not not realizing this guy can cast three more spells before your turn rolls around again. How else am I going to balance against Kron? Jesus Christ. Just make him cry for five turns. <laughs> yeah, make him cry in the corner. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Uh, that's clicks. All right. Um, going to steal myself and make an attack. I'm going to start with the dagger. Oh, no. A 12 doesn't hit, right? Okay. All right. Then we're trying the other one. Oh, my God. Nope. Nine. Okay, also miss. So clicks, uh, yeah, stairs are tough. I don't know what else to say. Stairs are tough. Stairs are hard. Clicks, you stumble and miss as he, still levitating, but now above the stairs, is able to dodge and cloak and dagger his way away from your assault. He is going to use a legendary action. He's going to go ahead and cast a fire bolt at Clicks. Uh, and might honestly whiff. That's only a 15. Whiffs. Uh, you see this streak of eldritch fire past your head. You're able to dodge out of the way. Go ahead and drop me. I'm going to try and hit him with the shotgun grass. Uh, at the very least, he's got a golden mask that conducts electricity, yes? You assume so. Oh! Oh, look at that! That's the double digit. Starts with a two. That's... That's a nat 20, folks. That is a natural 20. Uh, that's going to be 11 lightning damage. Scala, paint a picture. As they grip this mask <laughs> and course lightning through it from their palm. Hell yeah. They would say, your master will be joining you in the underworld where he belongs very soon. Right in the face. I have a retort for this. Defy us. Oh, you wish. This victory is only a stopgap. Every returned from here to Asphodel will hunt you down, fate thieves. As the simulacrum of Atris shatters into black dust and vanishes, we exit initiative. Clicks, now having forsaken Phoenix for Prufix. As the three of you see, these two spectral mage hands, the claws, resembling Glix's own, floating with a crown overhead. In the distance, you hear hear a shout. Gron! Gron! What happened? Cal, where are you? Cal effects running from the same spot in which he was banished, now returns to your side. It was horrible, swirling darkness, a, a temple made of black and Gray, blue flame at all sides. It... Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Are you hurt? I don't think so. Okay, you're safe now. It was it was cold and dark, and there was nothing but the echoing of my own shouts. It's okay. I'm here. Stay close. I believe these are yours. Clix commands the mage hands to come and give Andromeda back the creation's eye. Thank you, Clix. I had a feeling you would be able to recover this. And I put it back on. And for this gift, I have something in return. I did not know that you had developed a bond with Krufix. But my lady's brother is a worthy master. And I do not know if you will find this more an enigma than anything. But I will hand over the tome of understanding. Hell yeah. It's all Greek to me. What is Greek? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god oh my no that's god. not that's Clicks, not canon. i thought i told you not to break the fourth wall <laughs> no. oh my god so good i hand the tome of understanding over to clicks clicks looks at the size of it kind of overwhelmed leaves through it you at least took notes right it is a very puzzling text i don't believe notes would be a good guidepost but The mysteries of Krufix present themselves more as koans, sort of riddles with more than one possible answer and yet no answer at all. So reading this book is like talking to you. I ought to enjoy this. And he puts it in his robe. Oh, thank you. Right (laughs) over there. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Hell yeah. Um, So clicks. Not that we would probably have enough 
time to read it, you can still use it yeah. either in this campaign or the next, the Tome of Understanding as we know it, which upon completing would give you a plus one to the score of intelligence and wisdom. Oh, God knows I need them. Cool. And so, after facing this trial, and together, aiding clicks in dispensing of this, the four of you see this shadowy labyrinth ahead, and clicks through divine inspiration, realizing the meaning of the saga as it was etched into the pillars on the platform above, you know that at the center of this lies your destination. See this maze in front of you, made of shadow? How do you proceed? Gran feels the need to make up for what just happened. So, onward into the maze. Gran in front. Go ahead and give me either a perception or survival check. And as a minotaur, I will give you advantage on this. And as a cleric, I will give you a d4 on this. I'm still rolling with disadvantage on wisdom. Because of curse, yes. So uh, this is a flat roll. Flat roll. Perception or survival with a d4. 15. Okay. 15 will pass as you begin to lead the party into this maze made of literal shadows. You can see as you walk, you can tell on a 15, you want to definitely avoid the walls as these small shadowy tendrils stretch out towards your forms as you pass by. But luckily, single file, you are all able to avoid their reach. Gran, you come to several twists and turns, and yet your minotaur instinct kicks in, and you are able to guide the party towards the center of this labyrinth. That is one success. Everybody give me a perception check. Nat one, no more. Is this one with disadvantage? You're in a maze? I'll say it's flat. Okay. Uh, nat 20 over here. Ooh, Doesn't baby. matter. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and a nat 20, you hear in the distance, coming from within this labyrinth somewhere, this grunting accompanied by the pawing of enormous hooves. On a nat 20, you immediately know that this is the figure that you were able to catch passing glances of in the depiction on the pillars above. Furthermore, on an at 20, you recall the famous story of such a creature, this monstrous bull of Agonus, an enormous plate-covered bull monstrosity able to breathe fire as well as noxious stone-turning gas. We should make haste. That creature in the etchings on the wall I am reminded of some lore of it, and it is very unpleasant. Califex, looking to this, says, Then please, allow me to be of some use, and we'll take the next leg of the challenge using stealth to guide the party. He is proficient in this. I don't know what it is with Califex, but his dice roll really goddamn hot. That is a nat 20. He is able to guide the party. Gron's still steering, but... Califex leading with his skill. An amazing success from Califex. I'm going to say everybody go ahead and re-roll that perception check, and you'll all get advantage on this. 10. Also a 10. 21. Okay. Holy shit. That was the flat roll? That was a flat roll. 17 on the die. Gron, even through this curse in the back of your mind, you hear that the tremendous, terrifying form of this Bull of Agonus is much further away from you than after the previous skill check. You are able to pass further away and not incur any sort of errant ire in this round. And so, second pass, let's have a third from either Andromedy or Clix. Uh, I'm going to use investigation to try and suss out, you know, which paths feel correct and if there are any sort of distinguishing features on the walls or markings or anything like that. Uh, 19. Awesome. Man, the 19 passes. Clicks, you guide the party through these narrower still passageways. You notice these shadows becoming darker and darker all the while. Whether it be a flash from your new deity or 
indeed your own intuition, you notice, at one turn, a trap. You avoid it, possibly some pitfall. At another turn, another trap. Almost certainly some sort of massive spikes that would come out of the stone. At another turn, another and another. But you avoid them all, and are able to guide your party through unharmed. Gron, you can see in the distance, through the shadow, a small, squat tower in the distance. You assume this is the center. You are all about 120 feet away, down this final corridor. Everybody roll me one last perception check. Oh, great. Three. That's a 16. Uh, A 12. Gron, you can tell that the bull is drawing near (sighs) through the course, through this maze, even though this monster was close (sighs) and then very far and now seems close again in this enormous circular maze. That is quite possible with this final (sighs) stretch in front of you. What do you all do? It's a tower in the center? Right now you just see kind of this this semicircular wall, as if to suggest some sort of tower or structure. The whole thing is maybe 20 feet tall. Okay. In relation to the way that we're facing, where is this creature coming from? If you guys were traveling, like, right around the labyrinth, it was traveling left, and so it seemed to meet you around the other side. I'm going to run for the middle. It's bearing in on us. Quick, to the center. Ahead. Running. Everybody go ahead and give me a final athletics or acrobatics check. 16. Wow. My dice are being uncharacteristically generous tonight. That's another nat 20. Nice. 24. Holy shit, nice. Califex, got an 18. Hell yeah. The four of you see this towering bull of Agonis come into view. This demonic looking monster plated in some sort of unknown dark metal against the shadows of the space with gouts of black flame and smoke that shoot and pour from between its plated body. Twisted and terrifying serrated horns extend nearly the full width of these errant corridors. Its piercing eyes like burning coal flare as it begins charging at the four of you. However, beating it to its charge with those rolls, you successfully make it to this central tower as you pass through this narrow archway. Everybody give me either a perception or investigation check in your haste. It's a 17. 16. Just a 10. Clicks, you see around the perimeter of these walls a small staircase that winds down and into a lower chamber, some sort of either shrine or altar before the stairs continue beyond that, below that space. Furthermore, you can immediately tell this bull is directly charging towards this archway. You don't know how strong it is, but you can assume there's no way it can fit through it. Quick, down the stairs. Take cover. Yes, it can still breathe fire in here, so let's descend. You descend these stairs for about 20 feet. You pass below the first level of this structure and down into stone and marble, where you see indeed this small altar in the center of this room with the stairs that descend further. You all hear this enormous trembling of rock and earth above you as the bull crashes into the walls. You see stonework and debris shake loose from these walls above you, but they hold, and it seems as though you have managed to escape the ire of this bull of Agonis. You find yourselves in this room, alone. A small sense of calm. What do you do? Do you think it's safe to rest here? Califex looks about. Probably as safe as any will get. Okay. He, as well as the four of you in this moment, also do notice this small shrine in the middle of this otherwise empty room. All right, I'll, 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 I'll give it the wizard once over. Go ahead and roll me religion. Uh, it's a 15. Looking at this, you know this to be a simple shrine to Athreos, god of passage. It is a a small well that is unfilled 
with the etching of two crescent moons and a large scythe that passes through the both of them. This is a shrine to Athreos. It marks the boundary between life and death, between our world and the underworld. Often he requires payment for his conveyance across the river. You still have that gold I gave you? I don't think that is the sort of payment suitable. Califex digs in his pockets, pulls out one uncursed gold piece, and tosses it in the well. Did anything happen? (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps we should take this moment of respite to recover our strength, if we are to be next proceeding into the realm of Erebos. Andromedy, go ahead and give me a perception check with advantage. 21. You know that passages into the underworld are often complicated. Usually they're sought out by, well, followers of Phoenix. And for this one to be here, plainly marked by the followers of Athreos, you can gather that this entire site probably served a purpose far before becoming the den of the Rage Gore Minotaurs. Sorry, just like a like a mechanical question. The the thought of a rest was brought up, and this feels like a good spot to take the rest, and then we can do whatever underworld things need to be done, is what Andromeda is suggesting in this moment. Mm-hmm. This would be a suitable place to try and take a long rest if you wanted to try and pull that off. Otherwise, you could easily just take your second short rest. It's up to the three of you. It's the final save point before the final boss. We're it is literally the final point. save point before the final save boss. Game. Save game. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to need a rest before going into whatever this is. Indeed. I will take watch. At least the first one. I'll take second. I'll go next. You all, in this small bit of respite, find rest as Califex takes his watch. Watching the stairs above and the stairs below as you seem to have found yourselves in some sort of in-between, it quiet space. His watch passes. Gran, you are awakened by Califex, gently, as he says, So far, so good, I think. All's quiet. Okay. Are you afraid? I am terrified, Gran. Look at where we are. Look at what happened to us. I may be afraid, but I have faith. And that faith is able to temper that fear into a weapon. Grun nods. We all go to Erebos sooner or later. Nodding back. Indeed. Sooner or later. I don't fear death. Taking your arm in his, he says, Nor do I, brother. If this is what we face, I'm glad to walk beside you toward it. And I you. And our new friends. Now get some sleep. He gets his rest. And Gran, go ahead and give me a perception check. This is probably with disadvantage, right? This is with disadvantage. 11. All seems quiet. In the distance below, you can't help, but every once in a while, hear an errant scream of terror coming from some sort of unfortunate souls far below you. Nonetheless, your watch is quiet. Clicks, go ahead and give me a religion check with advantage as you sleep. Uh, Nat 20 on the religion for the first roll. (sighs) Oh, Baby. Oh my god. All this new Krufik stuff got me emboldened, feeling mighty faithful. (laughs) Clicks. In your sleep, you find yourself in something of a dream. You see yourself on the edge of a giant riverbank. This river not filled with water, but with the souls of the dead. There are translucent white figures passing like liquid in front of you. Behind you, A starlit figure, towering, hooded, watches your back. As pointing down with one of his hands, you see a figure apparate in front of you, out of the river, the spirit of your mother. What do you do? I turn and look up at Krufix and give a nod of gratitude. He nods back slowly. And then turn back to the spirit of my mother and just say, I did the best I could. She looking towards you, her translucent spirit form. You can see not a tear, but a smile on her face. And you hear a fading whisper as she says, That is all a mother would ever ask. Clicks 
waves a farewell. You take in this moment, and waving back, you see this spirit pass across this river. I wake clicks. With grumble clicks, gets up, gives a courteous, kind nod to Gron, and begins his watch. Go ahead and give me that perception check. 19. Waking to take your watch, it is quiet, still. I think Clix just takes the night to think long and hard about purpose and what that means and everything that's come before and not really think too much about what's coming next. Clix, as you close out your watch, your party earns a well-deserved long rest. How do you proceed? I proceed with three fucking charges of hellish rebuke is how I proceed. Got them shits ready. I proceed by putting a gold piece in the basin. I'll do the same. I look to Gron, the only one who has not yet put in a gold piece. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Gron, do you have any non gold? Yeah, I have 33, I think. Great. Four of you pay this meager yet honest toll and pass down the stairs where you see a column, a pit, finely made black and white marble staircase and walls, and pillars that stretch from the ceiling, which was the floor of the space in which you rested, six of them, through the center of this space, and down, as far as you can see. You proceed below, and eventually, you come to a large platform that circles the outside of this pit like a tremendous balcony. These columns continue through the center of this space, and down, into shadow. The stairs, which were on the outside of this perimeter, also continue down on the inside of this balcony, although there is a obvious collapsed section that separates the balcony and where these stairs now start below. Within this central pit, you hear wailing and screaming of tormented souls. Finally, on the far side of this balcony, Coming out into view, you see a giant altar, unlike anything you have seen before. Perhaps at one time it was to a god, but instead now black smoke pours from a single giant stone mouth, covered in jagged teeth, as if the stone itself had been morphed or deformed from its original design. The smoke covers the ground around it and flows up the walls. Finally, kneeling before it, and covered in broken chains, a giant minotaur. He rises, screaming in rage, in hunger, in savagery, in desperation. Turning towards you, you all see, by dim-lit flame, a giant, mohawk-like crest of black hair, pitch black horns, and brutally burned ashen flesh. His face has no eyes, none that remain, but rather hints of eyes, in the blackened holes of sockets, in a half-bare face that is skull in some places and burned flesh in others. His intimidating yet shattered black plate mail with one massive spiked pauldron covers the lower half of his chest and the rest of his torso and legs. Shadows rise around him, as those empty sockets flare with black flame. It's like the, uh, the Lich from Adventure Time. And that's where we'll end it. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.